Have you ever in your life run across somebody that was obnoxious or rude? I don't know about you, but it seems to me that people don't even attempt to be nice anymore. So how do you deal with rude and obnoxious people? That's a topic for this morning's Coffee with Colleen. Good morning and welcome to Coffee with Colleen. My name is Colleen Hammond. I am a former on-camera meteorologist for the Weather Channel turned executive image consultant, coach, and mentor. In 30 days or less, I teach women to take the guessing out of dressing because people judge it in a blink of an eye based totally on what you're wearing. So I teach women to dress for their body type, their color, their career, so that they can look and feel like a million bucks. Today we're talking about rude and obnoxious people. If you are watching me live and you want a copy of today's notes, just comment me in the comment section below here on Facebook. If you are watching on my blog or on YouTube or any place else, there will be a link on how to send me a note within Facebook Messenger so you can get your copy of the notes as well. These notes do expire, so once you get them, and uh, make sure you make a copy of them because they are only live and active for a couple of weeks and then those links come down. So make sure that you do get your copy of the notes. Fiona tried uh, Urban Decay, definitely has staying power. Uh, they do have really strong, uh, we were talking about lipstick earlier, if you were in the pre-show. So how do you deal with rumen and anxious people? You know, it really truly, like I said in the, in the open, it really does seem like people don't even try to be nice anymore. You know, it used to be where people would make comments online and you would say, wow, if they were face to face, I bet you they wouldn't say that. But I think people got so used to being anonymously rude online, it's carried over into everyday life. What do you think? I don't know. So are they copying what they see on TV? You know, I've, I've talked to uh, politicians and, and different people in, in authority in other countries, uh, for example, in um, the islands, in the, in the Caribbean. Well, they'll say when the people in the United States sneeze, we're the ones that get the cold. And what they mean by that is the worst thing that ever happened to them, they said, was satellite television because cable television and they started getting all these shows. So their people started watching soap operas and thinking that's how people behaved as opposed to being real entertainment. They thought it was real. And even sometimes people here in the States think it's real. And so they try to emulate that. They try, they want to be like the West and, and they want to be like us. So they start copying what they see on television shows. And I'm wondering, has that spilled over into our everyday society? Does that, has that, is that what's happened here? I don't know. Um, but it's important for those of us with manners who are gracious and kind and loving and wonderful, not all the time. Um, but what do we do when we run across these people that are rude and obnoxious? You know, and ultimately... Accepting the responsibility for our own behavior and understanding that they behave that way, that's totally their, their deal. We don't have to be sucked into their behavior and we don't have to accept responsibility for their behavior. So if, any, if anybody ever tries to throw that back on you and say, well, it's because you did this or said that, you're responsible for your behavior, they're responsible for their own. Good morning, Patricia. So don't let their words, don't let their volume, don't let their actions provoke you into a different kind of response. Because I talk about this quite often, but if you put, if you put up a hand and somebody else puts up a hand and you push, if you push against their hand, 90% of the time, they're probably 95% of the time, they will push back. There are very few temperaments. And if you haven't taken the temperaments course, I highly recommend it, learning about the different temperament types, learning how you are, how you behave, how you react. Um, and there is a link to that in the show notes that actually gives you a discount. It's a $497 course and there's a discount link within the show notes. Um, so if you email me or, I mean, sorry, Facebook message me and ask for a copy of those notes, that, that discounted link is in the notes. So understanding that when people are pushed, they tend to push back and we're that way too, you know, and emotions are contagious. So not to get caught up in other people's emotions is, 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 is key. Minnesota nice says Lori is sometimes Minnesota passive aggressive. <laughs> Locals take exception to that, but as a transplant, it was more than apparent to me. <laughs> That's kind of funny. So here's five tips for dealing with rude people. Number one, is what I was talking about the temperaments. 
first of all, we need to acknowledge the fact that there are different types of people, different type of personalities, different types of temperaments. And again, as a real brief uh, to the four temperaments or the temperaments course, there are four main temperaments and that will break down into 16 different types. And if you wanna be real basic about it, there's left brain people and there are right brain people. Um, so there are super creative people, there are super detail oriented people. And then it breaks down uh, further from there. Good morning, Joanne. So that's the real simple, simplified version. And sometimes temperaments can be oil and water. It, it's just how people are. So it doesn't mean that you don't like somebody because they did something to hurt you. You're just not really comfortable with, you know, if you tend to be very soft-spoken, slow, and very particular about your speech. And then you run across somebody like me who's just like really a high spirited and energetic and they're a little bit louder and they talk faster. It's like, whoa. So sometimes there are personalities and temperaments that are kind of oil and water. Hey, good morning, Connie. So um, Lori says, movies are filled with rude, obnoxious, disrespect, disrespectful innuendos. Children are subject to that way too much. And I think that's a lot of what people are picking up on. Good morning, Patty, where they see this on television and the children, they, you know, especially children with these real snarky attitude toward their parents. My, I, I think one of my children went through like a two week period where they were rebellious as a teen, you know, as a young adult when they were in their teens. So, um, but we didn't watch a lot of television either. But then you watch television and there's kind of this attitude that children have toward their parents. And, you know, are they picking up on that or is it part of that actual young adults do go through this, you know, learning to be a little bit more independent type of stage. Some of my students think it's fashionable to be rude, says Judy, the teacher. Yes, exactly. So again, some of those personality types are going to be oil and water and that's okay. It doesn't mean you're not a good person if you don't like somebody else. Sometimes you just have to avoid other people. Good morning, Jen. And we are called as Christians, and of course, you know, my faith is important to me, so it does spill over into everything I do. We are called to love and love is an action. We're not called to like people. We're called to love them. Love them as God loves them. God loves them with their flaws. Um, and love is an action. So it's how we behave and how we act. So number one is being patient and understanding that people are different. Number two, be empathetic and sympathetic when you can. Now there is a difference between empathy and sympathy. Sympathy, sympathy is when you feel other people's uh, compassion. You feel, you know, you feel that compassion um, and sorrow. Um, that other people are going through. And empathy is really when you put yourself in their sho shoes and understand, you know, coming around to the other side of the camera and understand how they're viewing things and, and what they're going through. And understanding, being empathetic, being sympathetic, um, doesn't mean you agree with, with how they are feeling or you agree with how they're choosing to behave, but maybe something happened. Maybe um, they ran, a, maybe, maybe something happened in their personal life earlier in the day and they're taking it out in their actions, which obviously means they're not very emotionally intelligent. That's another course you can take. Um, but maybe that's what's going on. And you know, we all kind of do that. If something happens and you're just like totally distracted and, and something horrible has gone on, it's going to impact how you behave for the next few minutes. Rick says the D Disney children are bad, but Nickelodeon is worse. Oh no, Amy, I'm sorry, Amy said that. Rick said the Disney channels have the rudest children. So um, yeah, so it's just when they copy that, they think it's cool. They think it's edgy. They think it's neat. You know, it's not. So if you're empathizing and sympathizing, it's tempted sometimes, you're tempted sometimes to get, again, because emotions are contagious, you're tempted to get caught up in that emotion. Um, but take a beat, take a pause and respond with kindness. Again, it comes back to this pushy thing. If somebody's pushing you, don't push back because then it gets into a pushing war. But when you give and you don't buy into that aggressive behavior and that rudeness and you instead respond with kindness, it can diffuse a situation. Sometimes it can't. Um, but if you're empathizing and sympathizing, saying, just kind of pause. It says, it sounds like you're kind of having a bad day. I've had bad days too. I totally get it. And sometimes they'll go, yeah, I am. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to blow. 
And other times they're like, no, I'm not having a bad day. You're just, then you just walk away. But if you can diffuse the situation by responding with kindness, isn't that a better way to be? Isn't that a better way? But it takes emotional intelligence on our part to be able to not get caught up in their emotions and not get caught up in their battle and not respond if they're being rude to us, not responding with rudeness. Uh, Fiona says, it reminds me of one of your earlier talks, a positive first, then a correction, then another positive. Yeah, it's all that always that Oreo cookie method, right? Positive, here's your correction, positive. It, it takes 10 positives to outweigh one negative. So the more positivity and the more positive energy that you can bring into a situation to help diffuse it, the better off we'll all be. Uh, number three, look inward for a why this person is upsetting you. Because other people can be rude and you're just kind of like, wow, that was rude. But other times people can be rude and are obnoxious and it really bothers us. You might want to dig down for personal reasons, dig down into that just a little bit and see why that person is upsetting you so much. Good morning, Brandon. Haven't seen you in a while. Maybe this person really upsets us because it's prompted by jealousy on our part. Maybe this person's behavior really upsets us because it reminds us of us. Maybe they're displaying something that we don't like about ourselves. That's a rough one. Can you hear my stomach growling, by the way? I know the microphone's right here. My stomach's going crazy. But if you don't like somebody else, it could be prompt. It could be, could be they're just a jerk and you're like, I don't like jerks. But it could be prompted by jealousy that there's something about that person that you would like to be more like, or it might be just the opposite. There might be something about that person that reminds you of your own personal flaws. So sometimes a rude person can be a light bulb for ourselves, either to look at something we want to, and then we can say, okay, me, you know, I don't want to be jealous of that person. I just want to be more like them. Maybe I want to be friends with them, or maybe I can learn from their behaviors, or maybe I can learn something from them. Fiona says the sin of pride. Yeah, it could be. Triggers had that experience yesterday. Yeah, there's certain people that can trigger us. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, uh, Patty says the old adage to pause for 10 seconds to respond. A thoughtful pause, says Lori, can diffuse a situation. It really can. So number three is looking inward. Number four is always using good manners. You know, manners are just virtue. Our outward manners and etiquette is, is a sign of our inner moral character. And that's from Aristotle, morally good inner character traits that are exhibited in an outward manner. That's Aristotle's definition of manners etiquette. Morally good inner character traits exhibited in an outward manner. So there's no such thing as company manners because that's a false front. So your manners should be 24 seven, whether anybody's around to see them or not. So, how you treat other people, how you respond to a situation. So if something happens and you're home alone in front of the computer and you blow up and scream and yell and that kind of thing, but if anybody else is around, you're going to respond charitably. Okay, maybe that's not really part of who you are as a core, right? So it's who you are when nobody's watching is, is character. So using good manners at, at always, again, when we're pushed, we have a tendency to push back, but being able to have that emotional intelligence to take a pause and back up and go, not going to respond right away. So oftentimes rude people need that extra bit of kindness because there's so much rudeness going around in the world. So being able to be a little bit kinder. Um, so that's also sets a good example for other people. When somebody's rude and yelling and the other person starts yelling back, what's this resolving? But if somebody's rude and yelling and, and, and uh, you ever been in a store and seen a really good customer service a, a situation happen where a customer is yelling and screaming and the manager or whomever is just responding kindly and listening thoughtfully. And, and sometimes they just need to be heard. Sometimes they just need somebody to listen to them for just a minute. So it's setting such a great example. Have you ever been in a situation where you've seen somebody handle a situation super well and you're like, impressed, props, totally, in total respect, right? I know a woman who claims to be my friend but loves to be rude, need to walk away. <laughs> She's a lonely divorcee, elderly woman, and she loves to be critical. 
A lot of pain there, Brandon, it sounds like. It really does. Be swift to listen, slow to speak, said Natasha. Very wise. Um, I call her on it. Yeah, you know, and, and Brandon, I think that's important too. That's actually coming up next is calling people on it. Uh, customer service, great example. Chick-fil-A. I love Chick-fil-A. And if you're, if you're in the North and you haven't experienced Chick-fil-A yet, it's making its way. It's making its way north and west. It's coming. <laughs> it's a wonderful place to be. <laughs> so offering rude people extra kindness. And if somebody is consistently rude in your life, this literally is the next point, uh, approach them about it. Confront them, like Brandon was saying. They may not realize they're coming across so rude because there's all that inner pain. And they just have developed this crusty exterior. And just letting them know privately, of course, not in a public situation, privately that, you know, when you said that, that was hurtful. That hurt my feelings. Or did you notice how her face when you said that? You really hurt her. I don't think you realize how you're coming across. Oh, no, I said it on purpose. Or, you know, well, they just need to have thicker skin. I love that one. No, that's called selfishness. <laughs> and okay, so sometimes they need to be um, they need to be confronted. Aristotle, uh, morally good inner character traits that are exhibited in an outward manner. That's Aristotle's definition of manners etiquette. Morally good inner character traits exhibited in an outward manner. Lori asked for that to be repeated. Uh, so be unselfish is number five. Checking your own expectations is important. Um, because when we expect others to do what we think they should do or what we would do, um, sometimes we set the bar a little high for people. <laughs> so set the bar a little bit lower. <laughs> lower your expectations. You're, you're, you'll be less disappointed that way, right? Uh, so you just sometimes you set yourself up for disappointment, frustration, when you expect other people to behave in a certain manner or you expect other people to do certain things and then they don't. Um, so lower your expectations so that you're not expecting so much from people. So that's a good thing. So here's bonus. This is number six, but I just throw it in there as a bonus. Take you out of your vocabulary. You always, you never. When you take that out and, and you can instead say, I feel that, but it's important not to follow that up with you. I feel that you are always insulting me. <laughs> when you say these words, I feel, you know, hurt, you know, ouch, that, that offends me, that hurts me, that it was kind of rude. But taking you out of it, taking a deep breath, step back. And sometimes we take things far too personal. I know I do. And, and it, it kind of sets me up for being hurt. When people will say something, and sometimes you think about it, you go, why did they say that to me? What was their ulterior motive? And you know, just digging a little bit too deep behind what people are saying and what they're meaning and, and that type of thing. Um, so learning not to be so deeply offended by what others say and what others do. Let let others be in their own lane and you be in your own lane. And love people where, where they are on their journey. And, you know, hopefully they'll do the same for us as we are on our, our journey. But taking the word you, if you, when you start doing that, again, you point and fingers, three are pointed back at you, at yourself. Uh, so remember to take the you out of it. And that could help diffuse the situation as well. So ultimately they're responsible for their behavior. You're responsible for your behavior and how you respond. And when you can respond to a situation with good manners and good behavior and diffuse a situation, it's kind of like in a store when you see good customer service and how one person is blowing up and the manager or whomever at the store is just being very calm, cool, and collected and nodding, listening, and responding with an even tone and not getting caught up in the other person's emotions. You know what that ends up doing? First of all, it sets a good example to other people. But second of all, what it does is it attracts like-minded people to you. It's like a moth to a flame, a moth to a light that you stand out, but you attract goodness and good people to you and they want to be around you. So again, if you want copies of, of these notes, either send me a note on Facebook, 
Sorry, I didn't mean to hit the microphone. Send me a note on Facebook by uh, using the link that's in the show notes. Or if you're watching on Facebook, on my Facebook business page, make sure you comment me in the comment section below and then check your Facebook Messenger. Again, a recap of those five is number one, be patient and accept that if people are different, understand the, the, the different personality types, all 16 of them. Uh, be empathetic and sympathetic. Put yourself in their shoes. Look at it from their point of view. Sometimes they just need to be heard or listened to. Look for the why that certain people are upsetting you. Uh, it could be that you're jealous of them or it could be is there something about them that is just like you. And when you see it on display, it kind of makes you uncomfortable. Number four, always use good manners. Good manners are simply morally good inner character traits exhibited in an outward manner. Number five, be unselfish and lower your expectations. Sometimes we expect people to behave better when in the past they have never really shown us that they are any different than what they really are. And then of course the bonus is take you out of it. Take the word you out of it and don't take things so personally, taking that you out of it as well. All right, so that's it for the recorded version. Make sure if you're following me on YouTube, subscribe to my YouTube channel so you'll always know when I upload uh, those new videos. And also make sure you like and comment because when you like and comment, the uh, social media sites, no matter where they are, uh, if they think that something is getting attention, then they boost it a little bit higher. So if you feel that this is a good message and that other people need to hear it, make sure you like, comment, and share this video. And uh, next time, um, not sure what I'm covering next time. I think tomorrow we're covering more on the energy thing. So it's going to be in a different playlist on YouTube. So we'll see you then. And if you're watching live, hang around because I'll be right back.